Hi, I'm Kevin Rula. I'm with the Office of Energy and Sustainability for Snohomish County, and I'm here to talk to you about recycling in Snohomish County. Um, there's a few reasons uh, that you want to recycle more and recycle right here. And um, the first of them are environmental reasons. You know, by recycling more and recycling correctly, uh, we're able to keep garbage out of the landfill. Um, we're able to keep from needing to build new landfills within the county. Um, it helps keep plastic and waste out of our waterways and other parts of the environment. Um, in addition to that, uh, there's financial benefits as well. Uh, it helps save taxpayer dollars, it helps save department dollars, um, because garbage, we get charged by the pickup and by the weight, um, whereas with recycling, we only get charged by the pickup. So we're saving all those dollars that aren't being charged for the garbage weight. This will be just for recycling at county facilities, so it may be different than what you do at home. Keep that in mind. At Snohomish County, we've got recycling for plastics, glass, metals, paper, as well as a number of other special programs. And I'll go into those in just a minute. So when we talk about recycling, there's three rules that everyone should remember when, when they have to recycle something. The first is clean and dry. Um, make sure anything you're putting in the recycling is clean and dry. If there's food on it, if there's dirt on it, um, that's, that's called contamination. If paper gets wet, it's going to get soggy and get mushy and moldy. That's going to be called contamination. Um, what contamination is when we're talking about recycling is anything that's mixed in with a batch of recyclables that shouldn't be there, um, which is um, it could be paper mixed in with plastics. Even though they're both recyclable, they're not supposed to be together um, when it gets down the line. So those are all contamination. If there's too much contamination, an entire batch is going to get sent to the landfill instead of being recycled. So we want to avoid that as much as possible. So keep them clean and dry to keep them from being contamination. Um, it doesn't need to be perfectly clean, doesn't need to be perfectly dry, but use your best judgment and try to get it as best as possible. So when you're cleaning something, for instance, a can like this, an old soup can, um, what you can do is run some water in there, swirl it around, and just dump that out. Make sure there's no bits of food in there, um, and that should be sufficient to make sure it's clean. And maybe take a paper towel and just pat it dry. You don't have to get it perfectly, you don't have to get into all the edges, but pretty clean so that it's pretty dry so that it's not going to contaminate something else that it's sitting next to. Um, the next rule is when in doubt, throw it out. If you're not 100% certain that something is recyclable, throw it in the garbage and that's a better place for it to be than to go into the recycling and have it become contamination. And then the final rule is waste prevention is best. If you can not create waste, not create garbage, it's better to do that than to recycle it after the fact. Um, we have a recycling um, of cans, bottles, um, that are plastics, metal, glass, paper, and a few other special recycling programs as well. Um, so I'm going to go through each of those with you and give you some specifics on how, how you're going to handle all those materials. Um, the first is plastics. Um, so plastics, you want to think about the shapes. So bottles, jugs, and tubs. So things like water bottles and soda bottles. Um, tubs like yogurt containers, and then jugs like um, fruit jug or juice jugs, um, laundry detergent jugs, candy jugs like this. Yogurt cups can be recycled. Um, those are all going to be recyclable. Other types of plastics are going to be in the, going into the garbage from here on out. Um, one thing to keep in mind is you want to remove the lids and caps from any kind of plastics and, and bottles and jars. Um, things like this happen. Oh, it's an empty container. Take a look at the cap, but oh, there's still garbage in there. Um, that's what's called contamination. Um, when there's still food or other items in the containers, um, those are contamination. And if there's contamination, um, an entire batch of recyclables can get sent to the landfill and we want to avoid that as much as possible. Um, the next items are glass. So glass is similar to plastic. You want to think about bottles and jars. So we have a glass bottle here. Again, you want to take off the cap, toss that in the garbage. You don't need to worry about the rings. 
that will get separated down the line and that will be okay. Um, so your jars and then bottles, uh, things like pickle jars, fruit jars, um, drink jars, those are all going to be recyclable. With glass, you only want to recycle uh, bottles and jars. Other types of glass are, are different materials and they're recycled and processed differently. So those are often going to be garbage when we're at county facilities. Things like ceramics, like broken or old uh, coffee mugs, and Pyrex, like cooking materials, that kind of thing. Those are going to be garbage, as well as broken glass. Broken glass is also a hazard. Um, those sharp edges, um, those are really dangerous. Um, the folks are going to be handling this waste along the way and we don't want them getting hurt. Um, and then the next items are metal. So aluminum, steel, and tin. So your typical aluminum can, totally recyclable. And then steel and tin, soup cans, uh, tuna cans, veggie cans, things like that. Um, with the lids, you want to keep those attached if you can. Um, and you can leave them on, kind of tuck them back into the can, or if you separate that, you can drop the lid into the can and just squeeze it shut and it will be okay. The reason for that is the metal lids are sharp, they have sharp edges, and folks are going to handle those down the line on the recycling process, and we don't want that to be a hazard for them. Um, so make sure those are tucked away or thrown in the garbage if, you, if you've separated them. Um, the next item will be paper. So paper products, things like your office paper, um, your printer paper, envelopes, um, those will be recyclable as well. Um, things that won't be recyclable are padded envelopes, things like this with plastic on the inside. Your frozen food boxes, those have a moisture proof lining on them, that's really difficult to separate. So those are going to go in the garbage as well. Um, shredded paper is recyclable as well. Um, you want to make sure any metal pieces are taken out, um, staples and paper clips, before you shred them. Um, if there's plastic sheets or plastic coated sheets, you want to separate or shred those separately so that it's only paper in these containers and bags that will get recycled. Uh, another item that's recyclable at the county is cardboard. Um, so boxes that packages come in, um, paperboard like cereal boxes, snack boxes, that kind of thing, those are all recyclable. Um, with shipping boxes, you don't have to take off tape and labels, but it is helpful to do that. If you can just peel it off, toss, toss those labels and tape into the garbage, and then break down the boxes, and those can be recycled. Um, you can either put them in a recycling container or next to them, and janitorial staff will pick that up. For desk side recycling, you should have two bins. Um, one, a larger recycling bin, and then a smaller garbage bin or a sidecar. Uh, it's important to put the right items into these two bins. Only mixed paper, cardboard, and paperboard should go into the large recycling bin, and only garbage should go into the smaller sidecar. If anything like plastics, metal, or glass gets into that recycling container, that's going to become contamination. This is only for paper and cardboard and paperboard. Um, it's not the janitorial staff's job to sort that, in, the, those materials, and so anything that's not supposed to be in there will become contamination. It's going to end up in the garbage. So it's important to do it correctly. Um, some special programs that the county has for recycling are pen recycling. Um, so there's boxes that look like this stationed around the county in different locations. Um, there's instructions on the inside label about how the program works and why we're doing this. Um, but what we do is we accept any type of pen, marker, highlighter, sharpie, and also correction tape dispensers in the boxes. You just drop them in the box and once the box is nearly full, anybody can call the phone number on the inside label and get that box emptied and a new box will get placed out. Another, another program that we have at the county is battery recycling. We've got buckets like this stationed around the county for recycling and properly disposing of used batteries and old rechargeable batteries that don't have much charge left. Um, virtually any type of battery can go into these buckets short of a car battery. Um, we'll take 9 volts, dry cells, lithium ion, rechargeable batteries, 
um, pretty much anything. Um, you just drop it inside the, the lid and let it go. Um, a few things to keep in mind are anything that's a 9 volt or larger battery or a lithium ion battery, you want to put a piece of tape over the terminals because that can become a fire hazard. It's a battery sitting in a bucket full of metal. We don't want any fires to start. Um, one additional thing for the battery recycling, there's a phone number on the label. Anybody can call that number. It goes to our solid waste department and say, my bucket is full. Can you please empty it out? And they'll come pick it up and empty those batteries and give you a new bucket that's empty. So another program that we have for recycling at the county is for toner cartridges um, from printers. So we accept cartridges uh, for a toner as well as inkjet. And um, these all can be recycled and reused. And we can recycle them in a few different ways. Um, the preferred way is to take the original box that the toner cartridge came in if the, from the manufacturer. And you can put the con used cartridge back into the box. They typically come with a mailing label. You just put that label on the box and send it off to the manufacturer to, to recycle. Um, another option is we have a number of large toner collection boxes in various locations around county facilities and buildings. Um, any cartridge or inkjet toner cartridge can be put into those boxes and they will be picked up intermittently for recycling and reuse. Um, a number of things are going to be no longer recyclable or never were recyclable that you might have thought they were. Um, some examples are fruit containers like this, the clear plastic clamshell containers that open up, those are going to be garbage. Um, plastic film and plastic bags like on your water bottles, those, that's going to be garbage as well. Aseptic containers with the foil lining in them, these will be garbage. Takeout containers like soup containers, there's a plastic lining inside that's going to cause it to be garbage. Polystyrene and styrofoam takeout containers will be garbage. Milk cartons will be garbage. Cake cups will be garbage. Um, cold drink Starbucks cups and other drink cups are going to be garbage. The straw, the lid, the cup, all of them will be garbage. For hot coffee cups, the cup and the lid will be garbage, but the cardboard sleeve can be recycled. We've got quick reference forms for recycling different materials, for recycling batteries, toner cartridge recycling, and pen recycling. These are available on the Energy and Sustainability website as well as the SharePoint site. So you can reference them at any time. Thank you for listening. We appreciate all your effort to recycle more and recycle right at the county. Um, all your efforts are really important, so thank you.